So, we have the mud guards back from uh, sandblasting. And exactly what I wanted was to knock out any rust so I know where I'm going. So I'm going to start cutting out sections so that I can put in a new piece. Um, probably do a bit, little bit of patching on the, on the tail lights well. These are the main bits of rust. But this one here is good and solid at the front, whereas this one actually needs a little bit here as well. Uh, there must have been a little bit of dirt stuck up underneath it, let it rot. Uh, there's a little bit of walk along them and a little bit of uh, fillers will, will tidy them up. And when I, was getting it, uh, when I was getting them blasted, I asked the guy, did he have any one mil plate, just a little bit of tin for, to patch them, and he said he did, so it was, it was just worked out well, because I actually just had none of this around. I have only two mil. Uh, one mil's perfectly fine for this job. So uh, this is around about one mil anyway, this original. And uh, probably a little bit of patching, as I said, around the lights, and I'm going to put them in position of where the 50 series were. 50 series uh, lamp, I should, I'll do a little video of it anyway, but the, the 50 series lamp was up in the centre of the mudguard, the 40 series was down on the lower side of the mudguard if anybody knows these John Deere's. And uh, the 50 series light just looks, it even looks better up here, but one of the main reasons for doing it is that we know it's a 40 series and it's not an original thing to do, but uh, unless you're an enthusiast you'd, it won't really matter, but the 40 series tail lamp hangs down a little bit and it's prone to get damaged and getting caught in something possibly, you know, you could bag it in some easily and tip it off something or which happens fairly regular around here. But um, yeah, hopefully it won't happen, but we're just going to put them up where they're more protected, they look better and at the end of the day, it, don't, it doesn't really matter. So uh, yeah, that's the mud guards back. Happy enough with them. It's great to get them uh, blasted out. Just leaves me that I have a clean slate. I'll have a little bit of dead work to do. I'll do a little bit of video on it later. I'll be tapping them out. A few dents along the edge of that. They got beat up on something at some stage. And this little plate here was an original plate that was to do with where the tail lights sat. Uh, the sat. I'm not just sure exactly how it sat, but uh, it supports the tail lamp at the back. I think. But I was thinking of trying to make this into a number plate bracket for the rear. Uh, but it might be too big. It might be a little bit, it is a little bit thick. So I'll see. I'll work that one out as I go. Might have to make just one for it. And uh, yeah, so that's the mud yards. Uh, the, another project I was working on here was bought this little weller, this little MIG weller, this Integra 201, 200 amp Miller weller. It wasn't running. Uh, I should have done a little video of this. This here, you couldn't see this. This was completely covered in like a grey primer. So I cleaned this all yesterday. You can still see probably bits of it around the edge. But there's a red primer on it as well. It looks like like a red oxide or something has kind of destroyed it. Destroyed it. But uh, when I went to take the red oxide off when I was rubbing with the thinner, you're getting, you're starting to take off the original uh, writing of the welder. So I left it alone. At the end of the day, I couldn't see any of these dials before I cleaned it down, and now I can. So this is all I need to see to be able to adjust the welder. And uh, yeah. And then another problem we had, obviously, I bought it as a non-runner, so it wasn't anywhere close to running. So number one was I had no plug on it, so I wired a plug onto it. And uh, another one was the gas line had been completely just snipped off, which is, here this is the original one i was just cut which i bought new line for it and i bought a new regulator for it so that's that's a regulator i just got earlier on so he is giving me the fit fitting and all to go on to it and i'll show installing that now in a few minutes with a new bottle of gas that i got for it because i used to have a um, mingweller here but i got rid of it sold it i wasn't getting the use out of it and uh, it's great to have one back because I do need it for a lot of little jobs. The, the, the arc welder just isn't just great. Even if I had a TIG, I probably could manage with a lot of little things I weld, but the big is just so handy in so many different ways. It'd be fabricating things and a little bit of body work like here and different things like that. It is a fairly uh, heavy wire. I'm using a one, one mil wire on these, on this. And um, that's what that's what was in it. So I decided to stay with it because so, it'll do a lot of fab work at that kind of size wire. Plus, I'll be able to just get away with doing body work with it. It's a little bit big, but it's it's fine. And I bought a roll, a new roll of wire for it. Had to install that as well. 
uh, there was no wire in it obviously so I stuck that into it yesterday so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to fit this bottle of gas up on the here on the rear of the welder and um, in here as well I have also to hook up where the hose goes it goes down in there on the on the little solenoid valve down the bottom so I'll show I'm gonna just show you um, I'm gonna hook that all up get that up and running and I'm hoping to just get that little bit of box section I had there that I was testing it on yesterday uh, and uh, run a couple of welds on it. Hopefully I'm hoping for it to not give me any trouble. I'm hoping that's gonna work out. So this was me testing it yesterday before I had gas, which was obviously, you, it's no good. You're not, you would never weld like this. It's just, it was just literally just to test to see would it actually feed wire and weld because a big problem is, which I'm hoping not to face down the road with this is, this is a Tweco torch it's known as. See, that's something wrong there. It's not, it shouldn't be. It's creating a static charge. But anyway, um, this these Tweco torches, the the cable and etc., everything that's involved with them can wear. And the wire feed coming out through this here can stick. And the wire feed sticks. When you're as you're welding, you should have a steady flow of wire the whole time. But if it sticks, the welder will stop and then it will start and will stop and will start and will start jumping on you and you can't get a smooth weld it just turns into a mess so i'm hoping not to have to buy a new one of these but look at it, it welded yesterday evening we'll see how it goes we'll just play it by ear somebody has done a lot of taping on this so that's why i'm suspecting there could be an issue with this but i'm hoping for not no issues but we'll see so we'll just get this hooked up now and i'll show you how we get on Seems tight. Let's check that later for leaks. I don't know if that's tight enough. So this is I'm gonna take the regulator out. It's a little power weld regulator. My little welder, my arc welder is a power weld and uh, I think they're very very good. I don't see much issues. They seem to be taking over a lot of the market now in terms of welding equipment and uh, some of the other parts I got for the welder yesterday is actually are all power weld parts as well. So this here now I'm just gonna put this in here on a stick. Let's see this should. So I have a cone section center. A little bit of a seat for this to sit on. And then this just tightens in against this. So I'm going to see how much should I put some tape on this. I just never thrust, never thrust these uh, fittings on any of these. If you're fitting any gas or anything like that, PTFE tape is nearly a must for most of them because they tend to fail. Or they tend to leak, I should say. And Leaking gas is very bad for business because it's not cheap. So I'm going to get, yeah, I think I'll put some tape on all of those joints. Grab some tape. Oh, 
these fittings all tightened. Hopefully. Might have been a pointless uh, kind of a job to do that, but it was. I will check this with leak detector when I've already hooked up. So I'll just let's see what I'm doing here. I'm obviously going to leave these sitting one way or the other so I can see the gauges at all times. Um, yeah, pipe down the way, obviously. So the pipe coming to feed it will be on the downside. And see what I'm doing hopefully screw that in now this is a, a specific uh, spanner for this job a lot of these bottles come, don't come with this on the top so you, you actually use this little uh, uh, spanner type it's a, it's a specific fitting for for valves so uh, this this does most of the fittings on them so this is going to do this fitting that one done that fitting they're all around the same size pipe on this now. I think I might have to cut that pipe. It's pretty long. I don't know. I'm not cut it. It's perfect. Absolutely perfect. I'm going to have to see if I have a clip to suit this now because I'm not sure if I do. It's pretty tight. So I keep I keep all these old clips here. Uh, they're actually really handy. Some of them, some of them, yeah, are, are no good. But in most cases, actually, they come in very, very handy. Like I know there's snap rings and stuff here that you might never use again. But they're just you just get little jobs like this here where you be stuck looking for something, and I just keep all these clips here just to make that a little bit easier whenever. Perfect. So we'll just check now in a minute now how this goes. See, can I get this to do some welding? So before I start doing anything, I first have to open up the the valve on the bottle. And this is a very a very good advice that people should listen to here would be to always switch this off when you're finished welding. Because the slightest leak this is, this could drain this whole bottle in the space of a couple of hours on you. And this gas isn't obviously that cheap, so I would just advise anybody who doesn't know this already, if you've ever have a MIG weller, make sure you switch off the gas when you finish using the weller every time. Get into a habit of it. Because, yeah, I know I have personally not done it, but I know of a couple of people who have lost a whole bottle of gas. And it's just not nice. But anyway, so uh, I'm going to crank this open here now. And you can see... That first one, now 
when you're opening these, one crack is usually enough. Just kind of forgot myself there. This here is showing the actual quantity in the bottle, so the pressure in the bottle, which in this case is 3000 PSI or 200 bar. And this is the regulator to which I suspect should show up on this alone as soon as I open it. It opens by screwing in. So see this here now. So it's at the rising. So this this is the supply to the welder. This is only this is only the pressure in the bottle. So this is showing you literally how much is in the bottle. Because as that pressure goes down, you've less in the bottle. But this is showing me exactly the feed I'm giving to the welder. I actually hear no leaks at the moment. I, I'm going to do a leak detection on it later on. I just want to test the welder, make sure it's working. I will check this out now in a moment with the welder. So I'll put the welder on. And I'm just gonna simply listen to this. Which I can hear the, the gas coming on that. You might be able to hear it in the camera, you might not. Uh, whenever I turn that. so. Whenever I switched that on, I was able to hear the gas coming up this. Now, it may not be enough gas on it. I can hear a little hiss. It might need to be a little bit higher. But we'll test it out, see how it goes. And if it's not, I'll just turn it up a little bit. You only need literally enough gas that you can hear. And you can hear the gas coming out of this. And your weld seems to be welding smooth and not spitting and uh, oxidizing and that against the against you when you're trying to weld well then there's enough gas you only need to make sure that your get your weld is nice and smooth and it's not oxidizing you don't need any more gas because any more is just a waste you're obviously shielding it enough with the gas at that point So as you can see, I just simply put my initials on that, in case you didn't know who I was already. And uh, I'm actually very impressed. That is absolutely perfect. It's running perfect, boring perfect. When I started off, you can see this here. So the welder wasn't torn up enough for the amount of wire it was getting, and you could you, you might have been able to notice it jumping. So there's too much wire getting to the weld that it could burn. It wasn't able to burn the wire. And this here now is absolutely perfect. So that's, that's welding in, it's burning in, it's leaving a perfect track, a lovely smooth weld with no oxidation. I might even attempt to turn the gas down even a tiny bit, even though it is down very low, because I might be able to even save a little bit more. Um, yeah, so delighted with this, delighted that that's working, and hopefully it continues to work and it doesn't give, give any trouble. But uh, by the looks of that, by running them couple of strips there, it didn't, it didn't hesitate at all. So that's another good job done, and Great to have that now to get uh, my little bit of body work done and everything else that comes after. So getting to the mud guards now and I am first before I do any more. There's uh, some dents you may be able to see in the camera, may not. Some dents along the edge of this here that was, was just beat off something or might have been roughly straightened. It might actually got damaged. You can see a few of the kind of bumps on it. So I'm going to just get take the panel hammer now and... Uh, the uh the dolly and try and straighten these up a little bit just try to get them evened out a little bit it'll have to get a little bit of fillers at the end just to even it out but for now i'm going to try my best to just uh straighten it up and when i get that straightened up the other one's actually okay i think i'll take another bit of a run over but i think it's okay and then i'm going to start cutting these out and making plates to 
to fix them up. So, as you can see, I've tipped this out and it's actually a lot better than it was. You can't see too many humps in it. Well, you shouldn't be able to. Uh, most of it by hand is gone. Now it will need a slight wee run of fillers just to take out the little imperfections in it, which there is a couple of marks. Obviously it was hit some, somewhere in the past. I'm not sure, obviously, where. Well, probably not around here before we bought the tractor, but yeah, and I was tipping at this just now, and uh, it's actually very solid, like there's not, there's very little rot here, but I'm going to try and cut out a little rectangle out of this, and try and replace nearly everything that's over this little beam, because I know underneath it, it'll be, there'll be probably a lot of flaky rust underneath, and get rid of this old metal. Now, I've been trying to figure out how to do this the best way, because when you cut out a piece of metal out of something like this, you could very easily distort the entire mug yard and to get it back in line could be very very difficult so i was going to cut out maybe in two sections but i'll see how that goes i think it's pretty good here so if i keep it if i keep tight within here i cut the piece out without uh deviating from this here i should be fine just a quick video just for anybody who may be wondering about the dollies and how i use the dollies so you have a series of hammers now. I'm no, I'm not a professional panel beater, but you have a series of different hammers for different jobs, different weights for different jobs. You have different rounds. Now this can be seen as a handle or can be used to make like these round, rounded corners. This has a bit of a, it's like a semi-round finish. It's for the panel edges. This is like a straight finish on the edge of this. You can use this round obviously for different angles as well. There's another couple of dollies here. This is a very common, popular one. If you're just using, doing, trying to straighten flat bodywork, you just use that behind the bodywork. And uh, the way I was using it, obviously, because this was the closest to this, was this round. So this round fits into this area here, just pretty sweet. It's pretty much very close to the, to the round of the mud yard. And by beating against the area around the dent, this here will, by reason, just the pressure this will have against the dent will push, will push the dent back out. Now, it may not be the professional way to do it, but all I know is it works. And I've been doing this a good while and uh, be, beating out different types of panels and uh, especially around cars and stuff. And you just get to know it by feel and whether it works or it doesn't. Uh, if you're doing a straight panel, that there is like, that's very good there just for behind it then you can beat up against that then until you have it straight I actually have to notice a bit of a rise in that but I think it's supposed to be in it you can see it from there but anyway yeah so that's that's the way that uh, that's the way that works just for anybody who is interested in the dollies they're dollies and panel hammers not sure about any other terminology but 
all I know is it works. So this is the second mud yard here. I'm just after tipping out each corner. Uh, there was a couple of dents. There's a dent, a couple of dents here and a couple of dents here in this corner. Now it's a little bit more rotten at this point, at this point here. So I'm going to cut that section out obviously as well. There was a little bit here on this, but the, the rest of it is actually an awful lot more straight than the other mud yard. So I've just marked this here now. So this is this is the line at where there's a fold on this reinforcing angle here on the centre. You may be able to see that. So that's that's the I've marked uh, where the top side of that is, and these little marks here where the original spot wells are. It's just to give me an idea of where I'm going to cut so that I'm not going to interfere with the spots because I don't want to uh, distort anything. So this here is enough. This this square will be fine to cut out without causing any problems. Uh, I, this line is actually on the upper side of the angle, so the spots on the lower side of the angle are down probably around here somewhere. So I'm just going to cut these out here, cut this section out. I don't plan on cutting up to that line. I plan on cutting maybe across below them spots well definitely on this lower side probably get a wh white chalk line now here mark a straighter line here i may have to go up here a little bit because this here is actually rotten underneath i'm hoping the rest of this isn't completely rotten but um it leaves me that uh I, if i cut even a wee section out here i can put a little patch in up the way like that make a proper shape um i'll just see when i get it cut out i'll know more when i get it cut out i'll see what's actually underneath all this and see if this is badly damaged then I'll have to go away and I'll have to completely weld this back up and put new spots on this but um yeah I'm hoping for the easy way out at the start anyway So that worked out as well as expected. Uh, up here now, I can see there's actually a lot of metal left on that. So if I clean out underneath that, and I'm able to get some paint underneath that, it'll probably be fine. So I'm just gonna actually try clean this. Um, there's actually a lot of metal left on this. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go with that. There's a lot of metal left here. So I'm just gonna clean underneath it to try get a tap back there and there's a, it's raised. It'll probably need a little bit of ice upon to finish it off, but then I'll cut a plate to suit this and weld it in. That's looking pretty good now. Going to going to try and follow the round of the probably put a slight bit of a bend in this because this is actually supposed to be rounded here, so I a tiny 
I'm going to try and put a tiny bend in this. There's actually a little bend in it already. I'm going to try and put a tiny bend on this to just follow the curvature of the mudyard a little bit better. Save uh, a lot of fillers. And I'm going to tack it in. You can see small bend in it now, slightly. So got that plate welded in, I still have to use the, the little uh, flappy disc to just tidy it all up. I will need a little bit of filler as I said before, but uh, yeah, it's a bit better than it was. So uh, the next one here now, I just started cutting this out and I have two spots here that's holding this. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to turn it over and in here I'll just have a look for them. See one there and I can feel one there. Won't be able to probably see them, but I can feel them anyway. So I'm just going to get this here and I'm going to drill them off. And then you see, I can get the little piece of steel off. When I'm finished, when I put my new piece in, I'll just put a couple of tacks of weld in through them holes to fix the new piece. Just like that, piece should come off. Ah, it comes off. So, as you can see, a little bit of rust build up underneath that. But when a new piece goes in, I'll have this cleaned up. Should be grand. So I've just finished doing this here, uh, doing a little bit of welding on this, ground it down, give it the flappy disc just to tidy it up, polish it up a little bit. This is pretty much ready for eyes upon now, I think. Yeah, uh, it's pretty much ready, ready for eyes upon. So the next move here is to just pop this in, because this is the little cover at the front. It fits absolutely perfect, really. So there's a little bit of eyes upon, I'll just tidy up the tidy up the little bit of uh, imperfection on it and uh, yeah that's uh, that little cover's going to sit there anyway and that's the, where the window comes up along the side so that's the that's that bit complete all right so well away here now today plenty of patches and i got this one patched up as well so uh it's going to need a little bit of fillers now this one was pretty good it's actually no bad blemishes or a lot of rot or anything on this only here 
and uh, this one here this i ended up having to cut this this section out because this was just all rotten here so took this out got that in and made an awful mistake when i done it first because it warped everything after i welded it in so i forgot all about compensating for gaps so in other words the gap between the metal that i was welding when you weld it kind of pulls together the the metals and all then overall then it will twist twist everything so i had to recut that and do a little bit of work there this here i'm after actually this is all colored because i was heating it this i need to stretch this out so i was just using the blowtorch heat this here and i have a little bit of metal in underneath and i was using this here to press up on it while using a vice grip just to hold it and then i would heat this and tip it with the hammer till i was able to get this all out so it would save me on a lot of filling so because it needs a bit of filler here I don't want to have to put too much on it because it's just not a good job. But yeah, so we're at that now. I'm going to soon start putting some filler on and uh, yeah, filler on and sanding it down hopefully then later on when everything sets. And uh, yeah, I'll do a little bit of an update then when I'm probably filling. So I noticed a little bit of a low spot in this here still. So I'm just get my bar and I have a small piece of metal in here to get this little bit of flat in here and it's going to push up against this from the lower side I only want it here really so what I'm going to do is put it there and then I'm going to use the vice grips to tighten it against this which will ultimately give a bit of a push up on the metal because I don't have too many hands. I need these hands for this job. So I'm gonna heat this now, tap it with the hammer around it and this will stretch. And we'll bring this up a little bit more. So you can hear it cooling down now. So I'm going to leave this here for a few minutes till this cools down and kind of sets. This this will actually, it will hold this shape once I keep the pressure on it. It will stop the metal cooling down and contracting too much and pulling in, which I don't want. So I'm hoping this should work out just fine. I can hear it cracking a little bit, as long as it doesn't break, which is possible too. So all I wanted was an extra bit of stretch on this here. So I think I've gained that. So I'm happy enough with that and I'm nearly ready for fillers because without without doing this, I would end up putting a huge amount of fillers here, which is ridiculous. Uh, it's my fault that this happened because the plate I put in here was a little bit too small. If I had I had the plate just a tiny bit bigger, a little bit wider, and it would have it would have worked out well. But anyway, it's fine. It's the same thing. You can stretch the metal with the heat. That's the good thing. The heat's very good uh, to make you be able to work with the metal. And... Uh, yeah, so now I'm going to, uh, I'm going to uh, start setting up uh, for some fillers anyway.
So, got the oven sander actually, I'm after fixing this, this was broke a long time, this little handle, I just glued this back on. This disc is, these discs are Velcro, just stick on, and this is a 120. So I'm just using this quickly to tear down any big, big eyes upon lumps that I need to get off. The filler, I guess, in certain parts, just if it's hay, I'll just tear it off, tear it off quickly with these. Sometimes you have to use it a little bit stronger just to kind of get the edge off. And then I'm going to use 320s to try and even it out. And I'm actually doing this outside because the dust, uh, my mask isn't that good. So I'm doing it outside so the dust keeps going away from me. So before I just stick on the second coat of eyes upon on this, I've just roughly went around with a screwdriver and picked out uh, any holes and stuff as you clean them out, a bit of dust. I have to give it a rub of a wee bit of uh, pre-wipe degreaser. And uh, I'm gonna give it a, a, a skim of eyes upon to finish it. Most of it's actually done. This, this I'm happy enough with this bit here, except for a few wee marks. So I'll just go along and kind of just fill them up and then give it a final rub. This needs a little bit still, and the same with this side is actually low here. So, a couple of a couple of more runs of eyes upon. Hopefully, one run now uh, to to finish off this bit, build this up, and this up, and then whenever I have uh, that sanded down, hopefully there might be just one more after that to just give it a finishing coat. So uh, happy enough actually with this. Just uh, spent about an hour just rubbing them down with the sander and getting them kind of getting them close to where we need to be. So, yeah, uh, good for today, I suppose. All right, so as I said, we're going to put the, the lights on these mud guards uh, the way the 50 series was done. So I've quickly measured out the measurements we got of another uh, tractor. So we are 100 mil from the, up from the bottom, and we're 50 mil in from the sides. You can roughly see that, and that 50 mil is. I'll just show you the light. So, this is the lamp holder, obviously, and it's the bottom edge of the lamp holder is 50 mil in. So, what I'm going to do now in a minute is on these couple of points on the back of the lamp, I'm going to put some paint on these here and simply A this up as best I can. And I'm going to go up to it like this, and I'm going to dab the paint onto the mudguard. Now I'm going to make the holes a little bit bigger than what they need to be, so that there is a little bit of adjustment, maybe just to just to tweak the lamp here or there in case just by a it's a little bit out. But that's how I'm going to do that now in a minute. I'll just show you what way what way I'm going to do that. So this is the easiest way I found to do this quickly, because otherwise I'd have to spray some paint out on on a rag or something. So. This paint pen, so uh, it's uh, these are really really good for writing on things if you don't want it to fade or anything like that, it won't come off. So this is just the easiest way. I'm going to dab these two bolts here. Bit of paint. I'll probably have to be quick because these are, it is fast drying, but it should be enough just to mark it. So. Bit of a tweak around to roughly where I think it needs to be. 
two spots. So that's me now, that's the mark there. I'm gonna drill them holes a little bit bigger than these bolts. We can use washers on the back of them anyway to make up for it, but uh, I wanna get these drilled now. This eyes upon, the, this filler isn't finished and uh, I just wanna get these holes drilled so I know where everything is and I know that the lamp is gonna sit properly on the mud guard whenever it's finished. I can keep bringing it up to it and putting it into it. So yeah, I'm gonna do the other one now and I'm gonna try to finish off some of this filler work and I'll update later on. So in the middle of trying to address putting these lamps on, I have a plate that I presume used to be a, no, a number plate black bracket for the, that actually sits up behind the lights normally on uh, the John Deere, on the 50 series anyway. But on the 40 series, I think it used to sit, it used to be like a lower plate sat down some way underneath and the, the number plate was down off the lower end of the, off the mud yard. So, I, or the fender. So this here uh, is the wrong way. So I've noticed that the holes line up. I can get the holes to line up here, like that there. But I'm gonna have to modify this here to uh, to be able to walk. So I'm gonna have to cut a little piece out of this. Now I'm have to put that on the wrong way. I think. Let me see. I think the fold in this is actually the wrong way around because this here is designed that the fold is in it this fold is in it to to keep it to keep it up up the way away from the light so that that there doesn't intrude on the mud yard itself so at the moment I'm trying to figure out how to get this back round and then I'm going to use my little folder I made for the press to fold this in the way I want so yeah, I'll just show you that now in a minute. So, decided with the number plate bracket, I have decided to mark it here and cut out this little section each side so that this narrower section is going to be the only piece that's going to affect this here because this is going to have to be cut. And I want to cut as little out of this as possible. So, it'll be a narrow band in the center that'll be cut out of it at the back which make it actually look original looking. So I, um, yeah, I'm just gonna nick this here now, cut these out and tidy this bracket up and then I'll be able to cut the light, uh, the light bracket, the actual um, lamp hole up. So, the bracket's a little bit narrower now. These little tails will uh, be good for maybe even fixing points for the new for the new number plate. So, uh, leaving them little tails on it. The other bracket I seen an example of had, had little tails like this. So, uh, yeah. So I'm just going to mark up now. I'm not very accurate actually. I might tidy this up. It's not the same as this, but uh, I'm going to uh, mark up the the light the lamp holder then, and I'm going to cut it. I'm actually going to cut this little bit out of this. This is actually not the same as this side, so it's going to even this up. So I just got this bolted up, roughly you can see, probably see roughly that the, the plate's going to pa uh, pass the, the mud guard, so the mud guard will be sitting here obviously, it'll just come out past it and it'll hold the number plate just up above the, the light. On these uh, originally there was a little light here to illuminate the, the plate, there was a little light put on the top of the, of the tail light here just, uh, just to illuminate the plate at night. But um, I'm not sure if I'm going to bother with that for now. Uh, at the end of the day, it's not going to be doing that all that much work at night. And 
So now nobody really is going to get too worried about seeing the number plate at night. If you need a light, you'll see it. So, um, yeah, no, I'm happy enough with this now. I had to straighten out this fold uh, so that I was able to get the right angle so that I wasn't cutting out too much. So it just worked out perfect. That's all I wanted to be able to cut out was a little notch. So I just kept taking a little bit out until I had it out far enough. So uh, this is a wee bit rough and this is going to be the back side. So I'm going to use a little bit of filler just to tidy this up, just to fill in these holes, just kind of just make it look a little prettier. And uh, it'll be fine then for putting the plate on. I'll paint it black along with the light so everything will look pretty good when it's done. So I'll just quickly show you that should, I haven't tried this yet, but I presume. So that actually works really well. So I, I just, that's, I, that was the first time I tried that. I didn't even check it, but um, uh, the, the angle even of the bracket, I'm pretty impressed with because it looks to be good. It looks to be exactly where you'd want it for the plate to be sitting by the time when it's sitting on the tractor that the plate will be pretty much straight. Oh, well, hold on a minute. Yeah. Yeah, well, it will, hopefully it'll be somewhat close. Yeah, no, I just didn't realise the nuts were holding that out a little bit. But yeah, yeah, should be good. We, we can work with that now, so. Uh, we have a normal plate bracket where we didn't have before. Uh, it'll look, look pretty good. So, got the lamp holder and the bracket, number plate bracket, all in one piece now. And I cut a, cut a couple of nuts, small enough to go in, that it would allow it to go flush against the mud yard. So, as you can see, there's no gap. So, it's pretty good. It's that job done. Right, so primer is on, uh, happy with this. Uh, I just painted that bracket there, I give it one coat of primer and just a quick uh, aerosol of um, satin black. That'll just keep that um, looking right. I might put another one or two coats on it just with the, with the aerosol. It'll do well and yeah, just a bit of a walk around on it. Uh, I got it roughly with three coats. I wasn't worried about the back here. There's a wee bit of run down here because I was trying to get as much paint down in through the center of this here by blowing it down uh, from the top. And I ended up with a wee bit of a wee bit of paint down the bottom here. A little bit of a run there again, trying to blow a little bit of paint in underneath the edge of that. Um, yeah, happy enough with these. Uh, at the end of the day, these this, this looks pretty bad, but this pr won't be really able to be seen much. Because I'm going to underbody coat this with a, like a black tar, um, uh, scotch them like. So uh, the, all, any parts we can see, spots of wells and stuff where I filled holes and things, that'll pretty much all disappear whenever I paint it with the, with the green. So uh, I'm just going to give it a few minutes to, to set really. It's this two pack uh, high build primer is... Is suitable to paint with around about 20 minutes uh, between coats and then if you're going with a base coat uh, like your color you you can put it on with a, around between a half an hour or 40 minutes after your last coat of primer so it uh, yeah I'm gonna I'm just gonna go straight on with the color I'm happy enough with it look at it, it's not perfect and uh, it is a tractor and it is a working machine it's not absolutely perfect, but once there's plenty of color on it and it's well built up with paint, it's going to look fine. Like, uh, to be fair, it's a lot better than the way they were. And the edges of them, a wee bit, you can see a couple of little imperfections, but to most, to the to the normal eye, you won't see it. I guess I'm walking at it, you'll see it. But um, see, if I don't know if you can see that tiny little imperfection there. But again, plenty of paint on, you won't notice them, them things really. So uh, yeah, it's not a great day for painting. It's it's around 15 degrees, 
but it's raining outside and it's pretty damp in here. You may have noticed I was heating heating the metal a lot to try and keep it right. So um, yeah, I'll do a wee update whenever uh, whenever I have the green on. Hopefully. So all the painting is done. Happy with this now, lovely shine. It's fantastic paint anyway. The, the John Deere paint is actually one of the best single pack paints I've ever used. It's there it seems to be a very heavy build in it and doesn't give much trouble with, with spraying or anything. Like there's a very, very good shine off that. I'm very impressed with it. Even just like I'm not even going to put a polish on any of these. If you left a bit of orange peel, you would need to. This one here is not a shiny wood, listen, it's not, it's, you can pretty much see a good mirror finish of it. Um, yeah, so the, the, the painted front and back, the thing is now I need to let them dry a little bit so that I can mask around the edge. I'm going to completely mask them off. They're actually very dry. That's actually to the touch there. It's not even, you know, on your fingers, if there's a little bit of a grip, there's a tiny bit of a grip in, on my foot, on my fingers, I rub it. There's pretty much none anymore. It's well dried out. But anyway, so I'm going to mask off the edge right round on the body side of it, and I'm going to, I'm going to on the body seal all this uh, underneath uh, each side. Try and get in round the edge without without uh, putting any on this actual edge, right around, or any of the body work. So I'll have to, I'll have to mask off the holes from the front and. All those different things and just mask off this edging here and just get, try get the sealant in around this whole entire edge some of them I might have to do some of it with a brush in around there if I can't get blow it in and uh, yeah I'm gonna black seal these underneath with that uh, on the body on the body uh, sealant which is like a tar so it seals in seals in keeps them dry keeps the mud away stops the rust now the John Deere paint is very, very good paint anyway, so if you put plenty of coats of it on, you probably wouldn't have to really worry about that, but it's just for stone chips, things like that, it it stops the stones destroying them, um, things like that, it, it's it's a good way to go. So this, this one's been laying here a long time, it's never been used, and this was the perfect opportunity to use it for this. It says dead and not deadens noise and is excellent rust protection. Now this a lot of people make a mistake putting this on when if you have a little bit of rust on the surface of, of a body, let's say on the body of a vehicle, and what happens is you actually manage to sealing seal in the rust, which the rust always holds moisture, and if there's moisture in underneath that on the body sealant, well then you actually seal the moisture in and the metal will rust from the inside out. So where you'll actually get the rot will end up being on the other surface that's not covered with it. Or in other words, someday like the floor, let's say of a car, that will just pretty much fall out. It'll just come into, crumble into nothing because the moisture had been eating away at it inside, inside all the time. So um, yeah, so that, that the bottom line is I'm gonna get them, get the, this on to them as soon as I can, I can get a chance to mask these off. I don't know if that's going to be today. It might be later on if I have a chance later on, but yeah, I mightn't be too interested in doing that today, but I'm happy with uh, the result of these and number plate bracket as well is completed. It's done as well. A little bit of a run there on the back, it won't matter. I won't even see that bit. All right, so back here today, this is the old can of scotch that I'm going to use for on the body sealant that I was talking about. Uh, it's full and you can still hear it moving around so it's not set or anything so we'll see in a few minutes what it's like uh, i got these uh just masked off just roughly masked off just to make sure that the the painted side obviously that we want to see we'll always see is uh doesn't get covered in on the body seal so i'm just gonna get set up here now and i'm gonna start uh, i'm gonna warm them up first with the heat gun just to get any dampness or anything like that off the metal or off the paintwork so that there's a good chance of it sticking and uh, I'm going to just lash it straight on.
right so as you can see got the on the body sealant scotch on and uh, yeah nice job that's exactly the way it should be worked out well that can that was laying around for a long time so doesn't seem to be anything wrong with it it's there a long time i can even see this it's already starting to set it's it says that it takes around two hours um to set at around 15 degrees c so uh, it's a little bit cooler than that today, it's raining outside and that, but um, I'm expecting for it not to be much longer than that, probably about maybe we'll give it three or four hours, I'd say it'll be set. But I won't be looking at it again until tomorrow, so I'm sure it'll be well off by that stage. And uh, they'll be ready for probably putting back on. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that, but this now to do the cavities, uh, this wax oil. So in the process of painting this, there's a, there's a long nozzle you can normally use for spraying down into areas like that, spraying paint. I All I had to do was, uh, I could only use with what I had. So I got as much paint as I could down into them holes when I was spraying yesterday. And I'm going to, and I put a little bit of scotch just in that file because I don't want to seal any bare metal up with that, that like kind of tar. Um, I'm going to use the wax oil down in these cavities because the wax oil will stay will kind of even if there's a if there's bare metal anywhere down there that I didn't get paint on the wax oil will protect all that and stop it from rusting on the inside so I'm going to do that now and uh, I'm going to put it on yeah so that it'll be set as well so we'll just get this set up here now I haven't used this one yet Camera down, I think. See, oh, got it. So. Let me see. Yep, yeah, that's perfect. This little straw should just get all the areas that I wasn't able to get. just help protect it it is a day later and we're all dried up nice job I'm gonna start demasking it now start taking some of this off it's always a nice job it's really just nice to see your results it always looks good when you have the Bit of bows, bows, bows and valve with bows, you know. I was cheating over here, I had a little bit of it already done, but it's always very satisfying. I decided to let everybody else in on the excitement. This is always the nicest stage of any painting job is demasking and seeing your results. So long as the mask doesn't take off some paint in the process, which can happen from time to time. Oh, I hope not for any of that right now. So just do another bit over here. As you can see, it's hard to do it with one hand, but I've left a little lip around the edge green because it's just the way to do it. So that's your fender is folded in around the edge. So it's all, all, everything underneath, everything. There's the fender here that's actually folded around the edge. So you keep the edge green and then the rest on the body that you want protected black. So as you can see, Nice result. So I think you get the picture. Just keep stripping this off. Just, it's a nice end satisfaction. That's it. So we're gonna get going at them now and get them installed. See a little bit of a, that's a little bit of wax oil. That'll just come off. 
Så er det start. So, welcome back. We are back here today on a nice evening. Don't think the rain's too far away. Uh, it literally was, as I was driving down to the yard, it was actually black clouds, a lot of rain. It's looking okay here at the moment. It's nice and bright, but there's rain clouds coming in. So anyway, back to what we were doing. We were uh, putting these mud guards on the John Deere and uh, we got them on the other night. It's actually a pretty bad video. Apologies for that uh, uh, in advance if you haven't seen it. And uh, I just got some lights on. They're not wired up, but they're mounted roughly just to get a wee bit of an idea what's going on because the excitement, I guess, of putting them on. Uh, they'll still have to be opened and just wired properly, but I just want, we just wanted to see what they're like. And this is the result. So it's looking pretty good. And just that little bit of brightness there might help you see it. I'll get better pictures and better better view of it uh, whenever the weather gets a bit better or whenever I get it outside, I should say. But uh, yeah, really happy. It looks really well. Just uh, see the front. I roughly put that on last night. Not sure if you can see that really well. Just get a light. But uh, yeah, better work to do. There's a few wee bits and pieces, mats out of the cab and etc. There's a few things, you, I know you can't really see it. Just get a light. But anyway, so everything is on except for the windows to go on. These have to be wired, all the lights mounted and a little bit of a, a walk inside as well. Just mentioned that, yeah, the brother has done the bit, uh, most of the wiring on this and he's it all prepared, ready to go. There's a lot of wiring to do inside because the, all the wiring was pretty much shot on it. It was those, uh, this is this is trailer cable he's used, which is perfectly, perfectly good for the job. A little bit of five core trailer cable. And uh, we'll wire this nice and tidy down to the, down to the back of the light. Uh, there's this, this kind of stuff hanging around here. This is kind of like, Earths, etc. Uh, they've been they were coming down, they've been fed from these here. So we're gonna try and get it its own uh permanent ground. Uh and uh yeah, this is this is well he's there was problems in here, there's a little plug here and there's problems with it. It was um it was all corroded inside and wasn't uh, wasn't actually making any contacts. We cleaned all that, a couple greased it up, and it's working now. So uh, hopefully it'll stay working. It's a genuine plug, so I just like to just leave it alone. Uh, he had to do a lot of wiring inside. Let's see if I can see. Um, it's actually really tidy. Again, I'll get some light. Um, it's actually really tidy work. He's wired up all rewired in the loom. This is the this is all uh, solid solid joints in here. And over here, this was a complete mess. That's all solid joints in there. That was just complete everything was broken and corroded and etc. So yeah, and as you can see the dash isn't looking in great state at the moment either. So but anyway, we'll get around to it all, get it try and get it tightened up as quick as we can and get it back in action because we do need it for some jobs and looking forward to getting it back out. So I'll do a few videos now soon of all them little updates. So we've got these little uh, loom brackets, very small, just like a little P-clip as they call them. And uh, they are uh, obviously a little bit dirty. I didn't clean them or paint them. A couple of damaged. It doesn't really matter. Makes no difference. It's gonna be a little bit of washer over them, and uh, they're just to hold the loom in behind the mud yard to uh, bring it over to the light. So I'm gonna just clean these up now. Just gonna use the grinder to just tidy these up, and uh, I'll give them a little bit of paint, 
and we'll be able to pop them on and I'll put a little bit of uh, brush on the body sealant across them as well just to kind of just to kind of mask them in and keep them sealed but I need to clean them back to metal first I've one kind of was playing around with one there just cleaning out the file but I'm just going to use the uh, the cutting disc on the grinder and gently rub across it because they're so small I don't really have anything else that will clean them properly without taking a lot off them I just want to kind of just get them back to metal I have no other way the wire brush won't take them back people believe it well it won't it won't get them down it'll, it'll leave like a finish like a like kind of like this here and that finish there is no good for paint you can put paint on that but it'll not, it won't survive so you need to be back down to bare steel so i'm gonna clean them now So we have the lights finished. I know the track is running, it's a bit noisy, but the lights are finished, it looks really well. I'll try to get better images of it during the day. It's looking the power. The front, uh, front lamps up here at the top need to be replaced, but uh, we're just waiting on them to come, so but otherwise everything works. Happy out.